Hello viewers, welcome back to another session. Today we are going to discuss a very important and interesting topic that is about social psychology and in which we are exclusively discussing about measurement of attitudes. Now before uh, we go into the details of this topic, I would like to just talk about the previous topics that were taught in terms of how attitudes are formed, what are the various components involved in attitude formation and the meaning of attitudes how attitude change and many other aspects related to attitudes. And it is also important that attitudes can be measured. So in this particular session, we are going to understand and infer various information related to measurement of attitudes. So first of all, let us discuss the various objectives of today's session. The first objective would be to know the concept of measurement and to understand various techniques involved in measurement of attitudes, especially the Thurston scale and the Likert scale. The third another important objective would be to construct and administer these two scales. Let us go with a brief introduction of what exactly we understand by measurement. Measurement is an important aspect in any research and exclusively in order to understand the attitudes of people, we need to measure the attitudes of individuals. And we cannot directly observe attitudes, therefore it is called as a hypothetical construct where attitudes cannot be directly observed. In order to understand this latent construct, it becomes very essential for the researcher to conduct a few attitude measurement scales for which there are self-report questionnaires or sometimes non-self-report measures. Most popularly used questionnaires are the self-report questionnaires in the field of social psychology. Say for example, why we are mostly focusing on the self-report questionnaires? It becomes very easy for the researcher to understand what the respondents are talking about, what are their attitudes are about, but sometimes it also helps in minimizing the chance of measurement error. What do we understand by minimizing the chance of measurement error? When we come to attitudes and formation of attitudes, it is very important that every individual responds to attitudes in a different way. And there is a possibility of in order to be accepted to the society and because of the self image of the individual and self acceptance of the individual, it becomes very usual that the individual has a tendency to have a social desirability bias. Therefore, this helps in minimizing the measurement error. Now let us see what are the various techniques or what are the various scales that have been developed in order to measure attitudes. The most important techniques or scales of attitudes measurement are the unique contributions of many eminent personalities in the field of social psychology. The first one is Thurston scale, the second Likert scale, third Osgood and his colleagues scale, the fourth Gutman scale and the fifth is Bogardus social distance scale. We will be discussing about these topics one by one. Let us first talk about Thurston's scale. Now Thurston scale is the first formal technique used to measure attitude. Now this particular attitude measurement was intended in order to measure attitude towards religion. Now this is a very old technique around about 87 year old technique which has been formulated to measure the attitude of religion. Further, the scale is also popularly known as equal appearing intervals method. And in addition to this, the construction of this particular Thurston scale is a very complex process. First of all, the scale has two phases. Now in terms of Thurston scale, the first phase is a ranking operation. What happens in a ranking operation? Initially, the researcher is intended to find out to give a rank to a particular statement for which he need to choose a few group of judges so that they can rank a particular scale. The second 
phase of this particular Thurston scale involves asking the respondents to answer to the particular statements. At the same time, in order to have a combination of both the phases, it involves a few steps in terms of seven steps. Let us see the first step. The first step involves collecting and generating a few attitudinal statements regarding a particular topic. Say for example, if the researcher is interested in finding out the attitude towards doctors. So, it becomes very essential that the researcher should collect or generate certain statements related to doctor's attitudes. And at the same time, it is also important that about 100 to 150 statements are essential in the first step. The second step involves bringing down the 100 or 150 statements into a more potential statements around about 80 to 100 statements, so that they are useful for the evaluation of the judges in the third process. Now, the researcher is likely to put forth all these selected statements to a group of 100 judges and these judges are expected to give a value or a scale value to all these statements from 1 to 11. Which means that the judges after going through each statement, they have to give a scale value of 1 to 11 in the order of extremely favorable to the order of extremely most unfavorable. Therefore, 1 means least favorable and 11 means most unfavorable. And it is very important here that the judges should be able to evaluate the answers, but not responding to the answers. The fourth step involves that each statement is assigned a numeric value from 1 to 11 by the judges. The fifth step is an essential step where the means and the variances are inferred with the ranking of the judges and whereas statements with large variances are excluded as they are evaluated in different ways by different judges. The sixth important step involves the two or three statements which are very closely related to 1 to 11 along the continuum and they are selected for the procedure in terms of administration. The seventh important task is to administer the selected questionnaire to the respondents where the respondents will be giving a particular scale to the attitude. This is about Thurston's process of how a scale can be developed, but there are some advantages at the same time disadvantages of this particular scale. To talk about the advantages, now this scale may be combined with Likert scale that we are going to discuss in the later part for a more accurate measurement of an attitude. The second advantage would be that this scale allows for analysis of inter item agreement among the judges. So, there is a consensus of the inter items. The scale is also used for the identification of homogeneous items or identical items. Because of a 1 to 11 continuum, it becomes very easy to understand or identify a neutral position. Say for example, if the respondent is unable to decide upon whether favorable or unfavorable attitude, it becomes very easier for the researcher that the respondent has not understood and at the same time he is in a neutral position. The another uh, disadvantage that I would like to mention here is the time consuming, the cumbersome and the cost effectiveness of developing this particular scale. And this is also less reliable when we compare with other scales, especially the Likert scale. Because of its complex process and demerits, this method is rarely used in the applied research settings. Now, we come to Likert scale and Likert scale is as old as Thurston scale developed by Renesis Likert. This scale is one of the most popularly uh, used methods of measuring attitudes. This measure of scale also provides a very useful and a simple and uncomplicated method of obtaining data from the respondents. In addition to this, Likert scale measures the feelings or degree of agreement. Here when we are talking about Likert scale, 
we are intended to measure the feelings of the respondents or to what extent the agreement is among the respondents about any object or situation or individual regarding a particular attitude. Another important observation or consideration in Likert scale is that there are no right or wrong answers in that particular scale. And also in the Likert scale it is very important to consider both positive and negative statements equally. Generally when we talk about Likert scale it is a 5 point scale in terms of strongly disagree, disagree, undecidedness undecided otherwise we can also say neither agree or disagree. This is the third position in the Likert scale. The fourth position would be agree and the fifth position would be strongly agree where the respondent is supposed to rate where he stands with a particular statement. For this I would like to give you an example you can look at the slide and understand uh, based on this example how a Likert scale is about. Now, in order to understand an agreement to a particular opinion, say for example, if you want to find out an opinion about uh, a particular concept, so we can go for an agreement in terms of a 5 point scale. Say for example, if you agree with a particular individual being selected as a leader, so you can locate in a Likert's 5 point scale, whether you strongly agree or you agree, neither agree or disagree, disagree or strongly disagree. So, this is all about agreeing to a particular individual decision. Sometimes Likert scale can also be measured in terms of quality, say for example, the quality of education, the quality of the product. So, if people want to find out what is the individual satisfaction level, it is also important to find out the satisfaction levels of the individual where they can say they are highly satisfied, satisfied, neither satisfied nor dissatisfied, dissatisfied or highly dissatisfied. So, there are certain ways of measuring the agreement of the individual respondents through this 5 point scale. In addition to 5 point scale, there is also a 4 point scale and also a 7 point scale where the undecidedness is omitted. Now, attitudes can be measured by single Likert scale or sometimes a combination of Likert scales. Now, when an attitude is measured with a combination of Likert scale, now this is called as method of summated ratings. Now, method of summated rating approach is basically used under two important situations. First, a number of single Likert items collectively measure one construct. Say for example, if I want to find out health, so I can measure the individual's overall health through a Likert scale. But if it is also possible for me to find out the physical health, the psychological health, the spiritual health and the mental health and all these factors can be put under a method of summated ratings according to the Likert scale. Let us go to the advantages of Likert scale. Now, Likert scale is a widely used uh, measurement uh, in terms of measuring attitudes. The process of construction of the scale is very, very simple and the scale is likely to produce very reliable results and accurate results. At the same time, the reader or the respondent is able to understand the instructions given by the um, Likert scale uh, instructions. At the same time, for the survey method and interviewing with children becomes very easy with this particular scale. Though Likert scale has disadvantages, at the same time it has certain potential threats. Let us see how. There is always a possibility of central tendency bias. This means many of the respondents have a tendency to locate or indicate undecidedness where which gives the convenience for the subject to avoid a particular opinion. This is known as central tendency bias. And another uh, bias called as acquiescence bias where the respondents have a tendency to agree with the every statement so that it is more favorable for them. And also there is another bias called social desirability bias. In order to be accepted by the society, there is a possibility of responding favorably to all the items or statements in the particular Likert scale. 
So, there are certain biases with regard to the Likert scale which gives a demerit. And also another important consideration is the cross cultural impact or the cross cultural variations in the willingness to express the disagreement. A particular culture may agree with a particular concept, another culture may not be able to agree with the same concept. So, there is a need to take care in terms of the cross cultural variations. So far we have understood that there are two important scales that we have uh, discussed so far, one is Thurston scale, one is the Likert scale. Now, the question is which scale to be used for our research in terms of attitude measurements. It is always uh, said that we can any, any scale has its own advantages as well as disadvantages. So, it is very important for the researcher to consider and be careful in deciding upon a particular type of scale to be used. Ideally, it is felt that the Likert scale is more reliable than the Thurston scale. In addition to the Likert scale and the Thurston scale, there are another three more scales that I have been uh, mentioning in the initial uh, stages. These are all the important techniques to measure attitudes. So, for which now we are going to talk about the three important scales. The first important scale is the semantic differential scale. The semantic differential scale is developed by Osgood and his colleagues. Semantic differential scale is considered to be one of the easiest and simplest way of measuring attitudes. Most importantly in semantic differential scale, the researcher is intended to study the emotions and feelings attached to a particular attitude. Say for example, peace. If an individual has, a, what is the perception of peace among a particular individual? So, if, if I want to identify this and I want to identify what are the feelings associated with this particular concept of peace and it becomes very easy to use a semantic differential scale. Here in order to measure the meaning of the word peace, the researcher may formulate a question by stating how do you perceive peace now or what do you mean by peace. Then the researcher asks the respondent to rate on a series of 7 point scale as mentioned. And in another important dimension under semantic differential scale is there are three domains that measures or which are essential in measuring the particular attitude. The first is evaluation, the second is potency, the third is activity. It is very essential for the researcher to consider all the three domains because the evaluation about a particular concept of attitude and the potential or the potency of the particular individual response is of utmost importance. Similarly, the activity whether it is fast or slow can also be identified with these domains of semantic differential scales. The most important advantage of semantic differential scale would be that it includes bipolar adjectives. It is very simple to understand and very economical means of measuring attitudes and it is also most appropriate scale when the researcher is interested in measuring the feelings or the affective responses as it involves evaluation, potency as well as activity of the respondent. The disadvantage of semantic differential scale would be, however, this scale possesses certain disadvantages. The evaluation dimension that means whether a particular attitude or whether the feelings towards that particular attitude is good or bad is more indicative in terms of evaluative dimension. Therefore, and it is also giving a more susceptibility to social desirability bias. Again, when you are talking about social desirability bias, there is a tendency for the respondent to be more favorable towards the evaluation in terms of a positive adjective that is they may have a very good feeling towards any concept in order to be accepted by the society and also to be accepted for oneself.
Now, we are going to talk about another important measurement that has been developed by Gutman and his colleagues. Gutman scale is an attitude measurement that came into existence for the past 1950s. The scale is a unidimensional scale that means this scale is intended to measure only one particular domain or one particular variable of a attitude and it also determines the relationship that exists in a group of items. Now, when the overall score is deciding upon a one particular variable under study, it also becomes very essential to find out the relationship within the group of items. Therefore, it is possible under the Gutman scale. Even in Gutman scale, the unidimensional set of items that are ranked in order of difficulty from least extreme to most extreme positions. Take an example of an attitude measurement by following Gutman scale, where the individual wants to measure the attitude towards chocolate. So, if the researcher want to find out the attitude towards chocolate among particular group of respondents, he can frame the statements as follows. The first statement would be, I am willing to be near chocolate. The second statement would be, I am willing to smell the chocolate. The third would be, I am willing to eat a chocolate. The fourth would be, I love to eat chocolate. That means, under unidimensional uh, statements, there is a hierarchy of exposure to a particular attitude formation or to a particular attitude measurement. Therefore, these four items are having a relationship with one another. At the same time, it is measuring the attitude towards the chocolate. Hence, the advantages of Gutman scale would be that by applying this particular scale, the researcher tries to simplify the process of measurement. At the same time, increase the accuracy of the test. The disadvantages would be that it is not effective where the number of items increased. Sometimes, if we limit the number of items because there is a strong association between the items in the group, it becomes comfortable and easy for the researcher to understand that a particular measurement of attitude is viable. But it becomes difficult if we add on more number of statements. Therefore, there is a possibility of ambiguity. Let us now come to Bogardus scale. Now, Bogardus scale is very famous in identifying the social distance. Now, when we are talking about social distance, now it is very important to understand social distances, especially in the ethnic and racial groups. Now, in, when you talk about social psychology, there are so many discriminations, there are so many racial discriminations, there are groups uh, in the society. Uh, there are some communities in the society. So, it is very essential in order to identify these social distances. Many uh, researchers are comfortable in using the Bogardus social distance scale. Especially if we want to identify prejudice among a particular group of individuals, it is essential that we can use the social distance scale. And it is very indicative that the higher the prejudice, the lesser is the social interaction. Therefore, we can identify individuals what could be the reasons or whether they would be near to a particular group or whether they would avoid a particular group through the social distance scale. Here, the items or the statements in the social distance scale describe the relationship with the individual as well as with the social groups. Say for example, if you want to identify or if, if you want to find out the relationship between an individual or with a person with physical disabilities. There are two criteria with regard to the social distance scale and these criteria are one is the exclusion, one is the inclusion. Whether the respondent is interested in inclusion of a subject or whether the respondent is excluding a particular attitude about a particular individual. So, this particular slide will show you what are the various statements involved under social distance scale. To measure the attitude towards persons with disabilities, the researcher may ask a group of respondents or participants 
to what extent they would be accepting the physically disabled individuals. The first statement would be close relatives by marriage. If an individual or the respondent is very much uh, interested or is able to accept a close relative having a physical disability. The second one would be whether the individual accepts close personal friends with disability. The third, whether the individual or the respondent accepts neighbors with disability. The fourth, accepting co-workers in the office with disability and the fifth would exclude from the disability. Now, there is a score that you can see from the slide for the first statement there is a 1.0 score, the second there is 2.0, third there is a 3.0, fourth there is a 4.0. So, as you understand that 1 being the least social distance and 5 being the most social distance. This is how the social distance scale can be measured according to the Bogardus social distance scale. Another important consideration about what is the appropriate method or what is the appropriate scale to be used by the researcher is an important question. Again, as I have told you, each scale has its own ways of advantages as well as disadvantages and it is very crucial for the researcher to decide upon and choose the right scale to administer in measuring the attitudes.